Hey you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come in and talk about this crazy case that's once again coming from our first favorite state, wretched ass Florida. And you guys and I just had surgery, so my voice is just all messed up from when they had the tubes down my throat. So I can't even say ratchet Florida right. But I do want to come on here and talk about everything that's that's going on with this case, okay? So what's going down is that basically we have three girls. Two of them were 15 and one was 16 years old. These girls are repeat offenders. They've stolen several cars in the past and they decided to steal another car. This was a month ago. And so the police caught them and was telling them to pull over. The girls decided to take the police on a high speed chase and they ended up cutting through a cemetery. And unfortunately for them, they made the wrong turn into the cemetery and they ended up driving into a pond. And the police are being accused of literally watching these girls drown to death and being said that, you know, they didn't do enough to help. This has just been such a messy case. The video only shows one police officer there, but from what we don't see, there's several police officers on the scene. A lot of people are saying that this is racism. How dare they not go into the swamp and try and rescue these girls? And how dare the police just sit there and watch? Now the Pinellas County Sheriff, Bob Gutierrez, he's talking about the situation. He's defending his deputies and he's going off. This entire situation is crazy. I want you guys to watch what the sheriff had to say. And I want you guys to watch what the mothers had to say about their so-called innocent daughters. Check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. But 10 tonight, details continue to emerge in a crash that killed three teen girls in Pinellas County. Detectives say they drove a stolen car right into a pond. Nearly three weeks later, we're seeing what happened in the seconds before that car went under. Fox 13's Haley Hines is in our control room tonight with what we've learned. Haley. Well, Kelly, last week, lawyers for the mothers of two of the girls called into question investigators' accounts of what really happened on March 31st. The sheriff's office has since released dash cam video, radio transmissions, crime scene photos, every piece of material they say is known to be available. And new tonight, we are seeing what happened just before the girl's car made its final fatal turn. Families are hurting. She was my baby. Investigators are trying to understand what drove three teen girls to their death in this dark, murky water. 15-year-olds Lanaya Miller and Ashanti Butler and 16-year-old Dominique Battle were inside this car in the early morning of March 31st. Deputies say they stole it and sped from them with no headlights on. Lawyers representing two of the girls' mothers have since accused deputies of chasing them into the pond at Royal Palm Cemetery in St. Pete. I only want the truth. I need answers and I need closure. 1022, he's not stopping. The sheriff's office answered in the form of newly released dash cam video, radio transmissions, photos, and reports. They were in a stolen car at 4 o'clock in the morning running from the police. And very, very unfortunately, uh, whichever one of the three of them was driving that car made a bad decision. Video shows the girl's car drive down a dead end road. Some deputies pull over waiting for them to turn around. The next unit comes in on this street. These two deputies continue following the teens whose headlights are on the right. All three cars weave through the unlit winding cemetery at more than 30 miles per hour. Eventually, the teens' taillights disappear and the deputy in front hits the brakes. All right, he's off road in the water. They're in the water stranded. It's sinking still. According to deputies, muddy water, thick vegetation, and unstable ground made it too dangerous for them to get in. It's about two feet of the truck left and it's going to be completely under. A dive team later recovered the car and the bodies. New photos show parking lights activated but no headlights as deputies observed and a strawberry daiquiri bottle in the back seat. The sheriff maintains if mistakes were made, they weren't on his end. I feel for the family. I understand the emotions they're going through, but I also can't let them turn it on us because we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, I got, I got a good vantage point. There's nobody out. It's sinking still. No, I don't see anybody. It's going down now. I hear him yelling, I think. Yelling as it was going down, but now it's, they're done. Well, 
Well, it is, he's not really getting attracted or he's even trying. He's driving, I think, Alex. When I was a beautiful person, she was only 15, but she was my baby. Natasha Winkler will bury her baby this weekend. My daughter was not perfect. What 15 year old is? When I was my oldest child and a great big sister to her six year old brother. 15 year old Lanaya Miller and two other teens drowned in a car when it plunged into a St. Pete pond March 31st. Pinellas County Sheriff's deputies say a man reported the car stolen from a St. Pete Walmart. All three teens had run ins with police before. And in the case of Lanaya Miller, she was she had no criminal convictions. She was accused of stealing a vehicle and those charges were dismissed. Two attorneys who are now representing Lanaya's mom say they're conducting their own independent investigation of the events that led up to the girl's deaths. They claim they found contradictions in law enforcement statements. In my opinion. First off, I would like to say that yes, my daughter has stolen cars in the past, but she paid for that. She did time if she had to do time. There is no long fight that she was charged with any felonies or anything because she wasn't and she has never been. Second off, all three of those girls were best friends. They all hung out together. They all took care of each other. So what y'all questioning why they was in the car together? Because they're friends. That's what friends do. They hang out with each other. That car was not stolen. They did not steal that car. That guy picked them up, a 36-year-old, 15, 16-year-old children. First off, that's a child molester to me because you have no right picking up children that young if you don't have anything else to do with them but about going to get a TV. What do they need with the TV at that young age? It's not right. The stories are not right. The stuff that the news people and everybody else report is not right, and they not the fights are not right. And I'm as a mother is going to get down to the bottom of this because of what it takes. Because I don't like how y'all are slandering my daughter's name and making her look like she's such a known criminal when she's not such a known criminal. How many cars did she steal? So at this point, it doesn't matter how many cars she stole. It matter how much that she didn't do, what she didn't do, and that she did not steal that car. So we're not slandering someone if we're telling the truth. So you're not but telling, so you're not telling the truth. So hold Would on, you, hold on. Hold on. So I think that kind of going after mom is a little improper. What we're doing right now is we're still having an ongoing investigation as about what is going on, what actually occurred, what happened. Just because Dominique, she may have had a, a little bit more of a criminal history, does not still, as Mr. Anderson and I have talked about, does not, if you steal a vehicle in the state of Florida, you don't get the death penalty. And essentially, this is what happened. These girls died. And there are strong, there's a strong belief that that car actually was not stolen. And there's a good faith basis to believe that the car was not stolen. And w without going into everything regarding the um, regarding you know the things that we're still investigating, that that's kind of where we're at. And w once again, we invite you to talk to talk to law enforcement to go go ahead and go to the scene. At this time, we're going to wrap for questions. All right, we're going to wrap for questions. What's your first name? Yashika. So that's Y A S H I C A. And they had mentioned that they wanted C L E. M M O N S. C L E M M O N. Yes. Y A S H I V. At this point, we invite them to give us a call. We've invited them to have conversation with us. So at this point, you know, our our door is open, and you know, as their door is open, and but we have made our attempts to to speak with them. So you have attempted to bring to their attention. Correct. Is it Yashika? Correct. Yashika. And I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. How can you steal a car if you leave your keys? Leave this car running. That is not stealing. Well, if the owner didn't give him permission, that is stealing. But he had him in the car. He had they the drove girl off in... without saying, "Hey, can we take your car?" He was. He claimed he was in the store. You don't think so? I don't think so, because the store that he claimed he went in to get a TV don't see a television. So, ma'am, it's your belief that you let them have the car? Come on. A 36-year-old man, is you going to own up to that you got these you know, 15 and 16-year-old girl in your car? Would you own up to it if you didn't have other, you know, other, you know, criteria? Would you own up to it? So should they be looking argument. into this man then? Yes. yes. We want, that's what we want. And I'm not here just to get justice for my daughter. I'm here to get justice just for all, all three girls. girls. Because I know all three of them personally.
when and y'all not gonna sit here and slander their names. When was the last time you saw Dominique? I, I saw them. all three of them that night. They were at my house that and I night. I seen them the day before. And they used to come over to my house to eat dinner, and all of them was like very, I mean, when I say polite, mm -hmm. they were very polite. Why were they out that night? I mean, how, how come they ended Why up Why do teenagers do what they do? All right, guys, thank you all. We're going to close. I just okay. want to applaud Miss. Um, Dominique's mom for coming. Uh, we, at this point in time, the Whit for Law Group does not represent her at this point in time. I believe this is her first time making a statement, so we applaud her for coming. If you guys have any questions, you know how to get in touch with us, um, but we just thank the, you once the again for- The extensive, unfortunate, um, uh, just misinformation uh, that's going on out there uh, by a number of people with this false narrative, uh, which is just nonsense. And so, it, you know, when we put out those media packets, is that you all were provided with all of the video. But unfortunately, some media outlets only played one portion of one video of one deputy who happened to be on a perimeter and is very misleading. In some media outlets, in their captions, in their narratives, said that this calls into question and people are calling into question where the deputies went in the pond. And that's just wrong because that was one deputy who was on a perimeter, who we never said was a deputy that went in the water, and there was probably well over 15 deputies out there, and people are saying, and then you've got some really irresponsible people who are writing articles and putting them all over social media, and Facebook's blowing up with it, saying that uh, I lied, and that we are not telling the truth about the deputies that went in. And the packet that we have has information in it, in the uh, in reports that were written by the deputies who took their gun belts off, took their clothes off, and went in the water. Those deputies aren't lying, and they're in the investigative reports that you all got. If anybody take a chance to read them, they'd see that they're there. And then you got video on there that shows those same deputies walking around without their gun belts on, uh, without their clothes on. And deputies don't just take their clothes off for uh, you know any reason in the middle of the night at four o'clock in the morning. They took their clothes off because they went in the water trying to rescue those girls. So what's being uh, promulgated out there is a false narrative and a flat out lie. And uh, we put that out there because there was so much of it being said to take that snippet and show there is video, if people care to look for it and watch it, that uh, supports what we said. I don't think we need the video. Uh, you know, if we've come to a point in this world where if it's, unless it's on video, it didn't happen, then that's sad. Uh, but to the extent that the video confirms what we said, that's why we put it out there. I don't care what those people say. That's a bunch of nonsense, and they need to stop it because it's a bunch of junk. Those deputies went in that water, tried to save those girls, and at their own peril. But when they go into that water and it's all sludge and they're up to their knees and they get entangled in weeds and everything else, um, they don't need to die over it. And they made a decision. One of the deputies that went in is on our dive team. He's trained in that, and he made a decision. It's too dangerous for me to go out there. So I don't really care what they say. I really don't. You know, they can make these bald, wild allegations all day long. Fact is, three girls, 14 and 15, 4 o'clock in the morning, in a stolen car, running from the police, and the three of them combined had seven prior arrests for stealing cars in the last year. That's the problem we need to focus on. This is the problem with the sheriff's offices and the problem with the police. This is a problem with those kids engaged in criminal conduct, running from the police. The police tried to go in the water and save their life, and they couldn't do it. And everybody who is uh, uh, saying these guys didn't do their jobs or were providing false information needs to stop that irresponsible rhetoric because it's nonsense. All right, so you guys just watch both videos. So like I said, this video really, really bothers me, okay? I think what bothers me the most is the mothers and this stupid ass bad built lawyer that they went and hired. This lawyer to me is nothing more than an ambulance chaser and she's just looking to get some money, okay? 
Both these mothers to me are shitty parents. Just the way that they're carrying themselves on the news, the way that the reporters are asking them questions and the mothers, you know, going off. The one reporter says, well, how many cars did she steal? And the mother's like, it doesn't matter how many cars she stole. Let's talk about what she didn't do. Well, no, 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 boo. What she did was steal cars. And not one time, but several times. Us talking about what she didn't do is irrelevant to this case. I don't like the fact that somehow the police are being painted as the bad guys, okay? Let's take this back. It is four o'clock in the morning. At four o'clock in the morning, two 15-year-olds and a 16-year-old had no business being out there on the streets, okay? Where the hell were the parents when these girls left the house to go run behind some grown man at four o'clock in the damn morning? And then the thing is, these girls have been arrested between the three of them. They've all been arrested over seven times in just the past few months. My thing is when they stole their first car, how the hell are they not still on punishment? Had I stolen a car at that age, I would still be on punishment. There'd be no way I could be having company, having people spend the night and still be kicking in when you just got arrested for stealing a car. So to me, these parents dropped the ball. The mom says that she wants to get to the bottom of it. No, boo, the only thing at the bottom is your daughter being at the bottom of the lake due to your failed parenting and you not teaching your child right from wrong, okay? And while I feel bad that these girls paid the ultimate punishment for their crime, I don't feel like anybody deserves to die over something like this, but these girls had a choice. And at any point in time, these girls could have pulled over, you know what I'm saying, took their L, went to jail, had their mamas bail them out, you know what I'm saying, and then and, you know, try to get their life in order. But instead, they decided to run from the police and they ran straight into a pond. The police didn't even know that the pond was there because if you watch the video, when their car goes into the pond, the police officers almost went in as well. If they wouldn't have seen their car fall into that pond, the police car could have very well had gotten to that pond as well. I always find it funny that folks on the internet are just so about that life. You know, everybody on the internet is a broadband gangster, the keyboard killers. You know, if it was them, they would have did this and that. You know, you can had that Baywatch fantasy in your head but when it comes down to it it was four o'clock in the morning these girls were in a car in swamp water okay that car could have very well sucked down the officers the girls even if they would have made it out of the vehicle by unbuckling their seat belts and making it out they could have put one of the officers down you know what I'm saying because they were so scared it was pitch black out there I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna risk my life for anybody else. These police officers, they have families too. They have children they need to take care of as well. Why should they risk their life? Because three girls wanted to make their own faithful decision. At the end of the day, like I always say, there are consequences for your actions. You have to be responsible for the choices that you made. And these girls made some piss poor choices. You know, at any point in time, they didn't need to steal that vehicle. At any point in time, they could have stopped when they got put over by the police, you know, and then for them to pull into a cemetery that's dark they don't know if there's ponds or they don't know if there's lakes you know that this was these girls' fault and I feel like this lawyer is being nothing more than an ambulance chaser you know what I'm saying and she's trying to defend these mothers when really the faults lie on the parents it lies on the parents that your, your children are 15 and 16 years old and they have such an extensive criminal record. And you know, a lot of folks are upset, like, you know, why is their mugshots being used? They could have used a Facebook picture. That's the problem now. We're so busy trying to deflect, trying to sugarcoat things. My thing is, why do they have a mugshot in the first place? Why are we not asking that question as opposed to getting mad at the police station, as opposed to getting mad at the police for using their mugshots? Why the hell do 15 and 16 year olds have mugshots in the first place? I know plenty of 15 and 16 year olds and they've never been arrested they're in school they're trying to do the right thing if you don't want your mugshot being used in the paper how about you don't commit crimes if you don't want to find yourself at the bottom of a lake how about you don't steal a car and go running from the police you know, it's like there's no personal responsibility in this world at all. People want to shift the blame and blame everybody else for their lack of parenting. These mothers are piss poor mothers. I'm sorry. And I understand once your child gets to a certain age, there's only so much you can do. But obviously, these women dropped the ball a long time ago because the average parent does not have a daughter who's out here stealing cars over and over again and going out on joy rides at four o'clock in the morning. So to me, the only people to be blamed for the death are these three girls and their parents' lack of parenting. I don't blame the police 
police for this at all. Because like I said, had it been me out there, I would not have jumped in that dark water either. There could have been gators. There could have been anything else. At the end of the day, these police officers, they have families to get home to as well. Yes, they're sworn to serve and protect, but that does not mean they had to jump into dark, muddy waters to go and save criminals who chose to drive their asses into the lake. Point blank, period. So anyways, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing case that's once again coming from our first favorite state, Ratchet Ass, Florida. So who do you guys blame for this? Do you guys feel like this is on the parents and on the girls? Or do you guys feel like the police are responsible for chasing these girls and causing them to drive into a pond? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.